Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on how to collect glycan array screening data from the CFG, the Consortium for Functional Glycomics. Here you can see I've searched for CFG glycan array data. I click on the first result, which is the Core H glycan array screening, which takes me to this page. I then click on glycan array data and it takes me to this option page and I can search for particular sample type types. In this case, I'm looking for a plant lectin and I know that it was screened against version 5.0. I always select data only and then click submit selections. Once you do that, it can take a while to load. Here's a preloaded page and I've searched for UDA, which is the, the plant lectin that I'm interested in. This was submitted by Dr. Lara Mahal to the CFG glycanary and screened against version 5.0. They screened with four different concentrations of UDA 0 0.1, 1, 10, and 100. You can download each of these result files by clicking on this dat bit. It takes you to a download page where it starts downloading. I have done that previously and you can see each of the four files here and then open up a blank Excel sheet and I open up each of the four files and I'm going to go to the lowest concentration the 0 0.1 and copy these columns now make sure you're not copying the data that's sorted by average RFU you want the data on the left that's sorted by chart number and I'm selecting all these columns, one to five. And I'm going to copy them into my blank spreadsheet. So this is for the 0 0.1. I also am going to take from the one next. And again, I'm just taking from C to E in this case. And I'm going to paste that beside. Also do that for the, the 10 and the 100. And you'll end up something that looks like this. You can see that I've inserted a row above and put the concentration above the the corresponding results. I've also worked out the max value, the max average RFU in each of the columns. So for the 0 0.1 the max value here was 7872 and so on. You do that, you do that. You could do it here for example by saying clicking on the functions, searching for max here it was one of my recent functions. So I click OK, and then to select the data, I click here and then drag all the way down, or I could type in if I knew what the row number was. So the max value all the way down to 613. So from 3 to 613, click here again and then click OK, and you can see the max value is 7872. Okay. Right now I want to work out the percentage of maximum, but before I do that I want to clean everything up a little bit by hiding the standard deviation. Right click and then hide, and then I'm going to insert a column to the left. I'll resize it, I'm going to call this percentage of max. And this is going to be equal to D3 divided by the max value. I'm going to format this as as a percentage and then get rid of these decimal places put it in the center okay I also I'm going to have some conditional formatting here so I like this if it's highlight the cell rule if it's greater than 10 percent the value is greater than 10 percent I want it to be green filled with dark green text okay now you can do that for each of the cells if by either double clicking here or by dragging down I the only problem with that is that it, it auto fills so this D3 then becomes D4 which is fine but the, the Q2 also becomes Q3 in the one below to stop that from happening put a little dollar sign in front of the 2 and then that will remain constant and you can autocomplete all the way down. So you can see here, these have become green because they're above 10%. Above I, I want to repeat this for each of these different concentrations. So I would insert a row. So actually what I would do is, let me undo that, Control Z. I would copy this, right click on the column 
the average RFU and then insert copied cells it'll automatically go into the left and then I just change this so it's H3 which is fine that's the value but instead of V I actually need this to be S to correspond to the one microgram per mil concentration double click to autocomplete and I also want to copy across the headers okay you can see I've done that I'm not going to skip forward, I'm going to do it for each of them. Insert. So copy. Insert copied cells. Let me get rid of that one I inserted by accident. And insert copied cells. So here it's going to be... Ay -ay -ay. Let me undo that. Starting from this, so click on the column, press Control c right click and insert copied cells change the formula, so here for the 10 microgram it's going to be this value, so the on the U column so change this to a U double click to autocomplete let me just change the heading click on the column, control C, right click, insert copied cells, change the title, and instead of, this is going to be W. You need to be careful when you're doing this and just make sure the numbers make sense, so that 4, 5 is about 20% of this value. Okay. Now what I want to do is sort my data. So I select it all, and I'm going to sort it based on the lowest concentration first, highest to lowest. So go to data and sort. Here it thinks that my data is headers, but it doesn't. I'm going to sort by the lowest concentration, the 0 0.1 and the percentage max, so that can be column C. And I want to go from largest to smallest. As so you can hear, the largest is 100% all the way down. Anything that's below 10%, we resort based on a higher concentration. Sorry, I clicked wrong there. You want to click just on there. Hold down Shift and click again. And you've selected just the data that's below 10% in the C column. Click on Sort. This time we're going to sort by the next higher concentration, which is in column G. So select column G. And again, if it's below 10%, we resort it based on a higher concentration. Sort. This time it's column K. And the last one, we will sort based on O. Column O. And there's our data. Now we there's our sorted data. Now we define a dominant binder as anything that's greater than 10% at the top, greater than 10% at all the concentrations that we've included. We would exclude a concentration if the average RFU, the max, didn't get above 2000 RFU. And we'd exclude a data point, a, a, a data point for a binder if the percentage CV here was greater than 50%. So in this case, we're picking out the dominant binders that's greater than 10% at all concentrations so it's these one these glycans I'm just going to color them a blue and then for the medium sorry the weak binders we say weak binders anything that's greater than 10% at the top two concentrations or greater than 50% at the top concentration. So this is our cutoff here, and so below that, we count these as non-binders. Of course, you can see that this method of selection is quite arbitrary. The difference between a weak binder and a dominant binder here is actually nothing, or very little. And here, the difference between a binder, a weak binder and a non-binder is very little as well. So we're not we know that it's arbitrary, we just 
but that's just the nature of glycan array screening data. We're not trying to reproduce 100% of this data. We're just trying to reproduce most of this data. Now we're going to take our list of binders, just the IDs, copy them, control C, open up a blank um, document. If you copy and paste into WordPad, you're going to get something like this. Don't do that. So you're going to click on paste, paste special, and you want to click unformatted text so that it comes in looking like this. You can then save this file. I've already saved it as experimental binders. You can call it whatever you like. And then when you come to our web tool, which is at glycam.org slash gr, or you can just search for glycam, come here and click on grafting. It'll also take you to that page. You can choose your code complex, enter your email address if you like, select your array type that you're going to screen against, in this case it was version 5.0 and then choose those list of binders. And there you go, now you're ready to go. And if you've entered your email address, you'll now get an email saying that your job has started. You'll also get an email when the job is finished or you can wait for it to end and you'll get your results file. That is the end of this tutorial.